be permitted to live if they touch the mountain. Only when the ram's horn sounds a long blast may they approach the mountain. Okay, this is very interesting because there's, um, I wonder if anybody talks about what that is. They don't. I think it's called the shofar. Um, but it's a ram's horn that they sounded. Um, and it would blast. I mean, it's loud, okay, so that everybody can hear it. Then they can approach the mountain. In other words, God gives certain instructions to us for a reason, why he does what he does. Um, and so after Moses goes down the mountain, he, he consecrates them. He, he tells them um, to wash their clothes, and they did. And then there's these last two little things that were thrown in, by the way. It's interesting. It says, prepare yourselves for the third day and abstain from sexual relations. I'm like, God didn't say that. Is that part of consecration? And I think the reason that the Bible puts this in there is that we are sexual beings um, to the point that some people have an addiction to being overly focused on it or it's called pornography and other things that, that, that people may do. Um, sex is not a bad thing. It has to be done the way God says. And it's very holy and he makes it feel wonderful because it's supposed to be pleasurable. There's nothing wrong with that, y'all. But you, you can't treat it in a baser uh, evil way. You have to treat it in a holy way. And when God says abstain from it, it's because he knows that sexual physical desires um, can be overtaking and he wants full focus on him before we come to him. Uh, especially in this particular circumstance, y'all, because they're, they're going to be face to face with him. Uh, are they going to see him, his actual face? No. All right, on the third, on the morning of the third day, there was thunder and lightning. Do you know that happened at the cross too when Jesus died? But anyway, uh, a thick cloud over the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast. Now here it doesn't say if God made that sound or if man blew that horn. So it's interesting. Everyone in the camp trembled. Good. Good. We're going to talk about it's good to have a certain amount of fear. Not a certain amount of fear. Full fear of the Lord. It's a certain kind of fear. It's a respectful fear. And honestly, it should be. You are so in awe, God, you better just do what he says. You'll obey. Why? It'll keep you from sinning. And God loves us so much. It's not because he's this horribly fascist, self-indulging, self-important God. He's He knows who he is. He is the most important. He knows that he doesn't need us to tell him. Even though when we worship him, we remind him that we know it. It's because he loves us. He gave up his only child, his only son. And he had a horrible suffering death just to save us. So don't ever doubt that God loves you and that, and that he's good. So you're saying, well, wow, he wants us to be in fear. He wants us to be in fear enough to obey him and save us from sin because sin will kill us. The Sin causes death, y'all. That's why Jesus had to come in the flesh because God put life in in our blood. See your little vein, whenever you wonder, just look at that little vein and go, God put my life in there. And let it also remind you that when you sin, the, the penalty for sin is death. And so to get life black, back, you had to have blood. That's where God stores our life. I don't know why he makes it the way he does. Our life is in our blood. So Jesus had to come here and, and take on human flesh so that he could bleed. When people are like, what did he come for? He came to bleed. He came to be our sacrifice, a blood sacrifice because of the sin. And because he was a blameless, per perfect, sinless being, both man, he had the nature of man and the nature of God. He didn't turn off his nature of God. Don't ever get confused about that either. When people say, we didn't use it, so he must have just discarded it or laid it down. It's like, guys, he was never not God and he was never not man. Once he came here, uh, he is now back at the right hand of the father. And, um, yes, it is true that while he was here, he accessed his God nature in agreement with the father. There was a whole plan. We can't possibly understand it all, but anyway, there's a whole plan that they used. And yes, he did not access it. But then other times he did. He healed people physically, um, there's a little kid outside in front of my house going, trying to see what I'm doing. Anyway, okay, so let's keep going. Um, sorry, I know I add a lot of commentary, but anyway. Um, so there comes the loud trumpet blast. And then in verse 18, we see 
that this is this you're getting told this again but see how it's clarifying a little more mount sinai was covered with smoke well we saw that because the lord descended on it and fire it's like wait nobody mentioned fire well usually where there's smoke there's fire but okay he didn't have to do that he can just make some fire without smoke if he wants to the smoke billowed up from the smoke like a like a furnace and the whole mountain trembled violently and i'm thinking volcano it's like beth this is not a natural occurrence God was making all this happen because of his powerfulness. As the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, that's what makes me kind of wonder, was it because they were sounding it or because God was? Uh, Moses spoke and the voice of God answered him. See, remember this is in the presence of the people. They see it. They're going to trust him more. Um, and the Lord descended to the top of Mount Sinai and called Moses up. And he says, go down and warn the people so they do not force their way through to see that the, that the uh, to see the Lord. And many of them will perish. In other words, remind them they can't just come here. Uh, even if the priests who approach the Lord, they must consecrate themselves or the Lord will break out against them. Now, what does that make, mean? The Lord was trying to say that he would destroy anyone who was not fully consecrated to meet him. Do you know how you are able to pray and God hears you? You're fully consecrated to meet him because the blood of Jesus covered you and God sees Jesus when he sees you with that sacrificial blood so that you can come directly to the very throne room of God. Um, because you're fully consecrated to God through that. You're made holy through Jesus' blood so that you can come directly to God. Um, and then uh, the people, and, and Moses said to the Lord, the people cannot come up Mount Sinai because you yourself warned us. It puts limits it's set apart as holy, and then he says, Go down and bring Aaron up with you, but the priest and the people must not force their way to come through up to the Lord, or I will break out, or he will break out against them. So again, he is reminding them <clears throat> because the Lord's um glory and power are so strong, and um because he is holy and we're sinful, just being sinful in his presence, we'd blow up. Well, uh, it doesn't say we'd blow up. I'm sorry. I'm just saying we would die. He even says, should they come towards it like they're coming up to kill them? Stone them. Shoot them with arrows. It's like, God is like, God is not messing around with his holiness. If you try to approach him with your sinful self, it you can't do it. He won't allow it. But if you try to approach him through Jesus Christ, you can there's only one prayer that God hears of an unsaved person who has not accepted Jesus Christ. Only one prayer. You have no other way to come to God. And that is to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and the Lord of your life and to repent of your sins. Have the attitude of repentance and say, Lord, I'm not going to try to have my own way. I'm not going to tell you how my life's going to be. I'm not going to say I'm my own God. You're my God and I'm going to do whatever you say. I'm not going to have my desires and dreams and glories anymore. It's all you. It's all about you. And when we give ourselves up, he replaces us with him and we have a much better life while we're here. And you may say, yeah, we still have trials and, and tribulations. And yes, you do. Because while we're here on this earth, there is still, it's an evil earth and we're going to have to deal with it. But when you have accepted him, he gives you the Holy Spirit, who is what? The comforter, the guide. And that is God with you, actually with you. And you can approach him at any time. That was not the case yet, okay? And so God gave specific instructions how you were to approach him. Um, because they they acted like the idols that they had from Egypt, that they could pick them up and hold them. And, and he's saying, no, um, you're not invited to approach God unless you're holy. And what makes you holy is the blood of Jesus, okay? Then you can approach him anytime you want, okay? Um, it is... This is, by the way, one of the showings when people try to equate Jesus to Moses or like any other teacher or person in the Bible. Like they show him respect, but they don't get, no, he wasn't just to be respected. He's God and he is definitely superior um, because he opens up the way for us to come to God with perfect joy. Um, okay. Um, next, we're going to talk about the Ten Commandments. So I will make that a whole new um 
video and we're going to go through the, the Ten Commandments and I hope you'll enjoy it. I hope you'll look at the Ten Commandments in a much deeper way. Because uh, sometimes people kind of throw off the Ten Commandments because of the New Testament. It's like, Jesus was very clear. He says, I did not come to abolish the law. Do you hear that? He said, I did not come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill it. And when we see Jesus in the New Testament, and he's talking to the Pharisees, and he says, you've heard it said, do not commit adultery. But I say... Do not even lust in your heart or you're guilty of the same sin. You've heard it say, you've heard it said, meaning these Ten Commandments, do not murder. But I tell you, do not even hate someone in your heart or you're guilty of the same judgment. What did Jesus do? Did he abolish that law? Did he change that law? He one-upped it. Do you know what the difference between murder and hate and adultery and lust Hate and lust are here. They're in the mind. They're part of your heart. You're not even acting on them yet. Jesus says if you're even thinking about it, you're guilty. Even if you haven't acted on it yet. Okay, we're going to talk about that. Love you guys. Bye.